sky flying out of his frame, the V that's anchoring this whole image down, and how do they actually make these cool magazine posters and the front cover? Well, these are some of the most important and most useful things that you'll learn in any type of layouting and design. So I'll teach you these step by step. So make sure you grab a snack and let's get started. Okay guys, with any document, we're starting off with creating a new document. So this is our new document and we're going to change this to eight and a half by 11. We're having three pages. We're gonna check off starting page. Just gonna start on page number one. For the column and the margins, we're just gonna leave it. Actually for the margins, I'm gonna turn it up to 6.25. And then for the bleed, let's just give it a 0.125 inch bleed on all sides. And we're gonna go ahead and just create this document. Great, after we have this document created, first thing we're gonna do is start off with the first layout. And the first layout is very simple. We just want to get this guy out of the frame and it looks like he's hopping all the way out. So to do this, we'll need the help of Photoshop. So once we have our image selected, boom, there it is. This is the image that we're gonna use. I'm just going to open this up in Photoshop. So all I'm doing is going into the file, right click, and then we're gonna open this with Adobe Photoshop. Then you'll see that Photoshop is going to pop up and our dude is right here. Now, super simple, we're gonna have this object selection tool. Now it might be hidden under some of these things, so quick selection tool or magic wand tool, but all you have to do is right click on that icon, go, and you'll mouse over the dude and or whatever your subject is and then you'll just click on him and you can see that Photoshop has already made the selection for us that's exactly what we want now you can see that there is a squiggly line that's kind of around this person you can see that it's missed some of these areas so I'm gonna hold control in order for it to add another object to the selection I'm gonna select the skateboard so you can see that it's added the skateboard here and for the rest of this, you guys should check for any imperfections. So here in his hair, you can see that Photoshop didn't do the best job at selecting all of his hair. No worries, we're going to go over to just the polygon selection tool. Hold shift to add selection and I'm just gonna roughly get the shape of his head. And when you want to complete your selection and round it off, simply double click anywhere and it'll basically add that to your selection. So I'm doing that for this other part of the head and make sure you guys are checking that there are no other imperfections like this in the selection itself. Once we're happy with the selection, we can go all the way up to where it says select and mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And then you can play around with the different radius of where the clipping actually is. But if we did a good enough job taking out on the imperfections of the actual selection, we can just scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says output to, and I'm just gonna go ahead and output it to a brand new layer and hit okay. So now that we have our cutouts, uh, brand new layer out here, we can actually just go ahead and show the background image. And then I'm going to unlock this by clicking the locked icon. And all we're going to do is just go to the selection tool, make sure we're highlighting the layer for the background. And let's say we want the foot and the hand to kind of fly out. So maybe something like this. Uh, and then we're going to right click, hit select inverse. And then we're just going to delete the background like that. Super simple. And now you have a guy that's flying out from the frame of the background, which is exactly what we want. So once we get to this point, all we have to do is go up to file, export, quick export as PNG. Export it wherever you need. Once that file is exported, we can go all the way back into our InDesign. Back in InDesign, we all we have to do is position this image onto the page itself. So once you have that image in, I kind of want this image to face the other side. So I'm clicking on the frame itself. I'm going into objects, transform, and then I'm going to flip it horizontally. You can see that he's kind of flying the other way now. So now I can fit this image to whatever size I want it to be. So if I select the actual frame itself, and expand the frame, right click, go into my fittings, and let's just do fit content proportionally, just to make him a little bit bigger. I can just drag him around until I find a place that I think would work well. Maybe something like that. I can press W to preview what my page will look like. And then I can just add a little bit of text to spice this up, and it's already a great layout.
okay, next one. You guys ever see those fashion magazines where they have the person in the front, they have the magazine words in the back? I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's all over the place and it looks good, honestly. Let's go and make that as well. So once again, we're right clicking. We're going to open with Photoshop 2024. If you guys don't have Photoshop or InDesign, I have affiliate link down in the description for you guys to get that. Remember for students, it's like $19.99 a month, which is a really good deal. That's like 60% off. So help support the channel out if you guys want to get your Adobe subscriptions and I really appreciate it. So getting back into this, we are going to go ahead and use the exact same technique. So I unlocked the page on the right over there. And I'm going into the object selection tool once again. Now, for this one, we don't have to be super particular about how much we select. As long as we get the top part of this guy, it should be okay because we're just putting words behind the top portion of his head. So again, I'm clicking on his body and Photoshop will help me pick out the subject itself. That's a good selection. We're gonna go to our selection tool so any of these, to make this window pop up where it says select a mask, we're gonna click this button. And again, we're going to get a preview of something that is super helpful, which is the selection and the output. Now we're going all the way down to our output and making this into a new layer of mask. This is perfect. We want the image to have a transparent background. So we're going to go into file, export and we can actually just quick export this as a PNG. Now exporting as a PNG is actually super important because if you want your image to be transparent, you must export as a PNG. JPEG will not do that for you, okay? So quick export as a PNG. And again, just save it where you want it. Here, I'm saving it on my desktop. And then we're going again back into InDesign. So see you guys over there. Okay, this is our page in InDesign. And we're actually gonna start off by dragging in the original image. So the original image is the full image. All I'm gonna do is drag and drop and then I'm gonna tell InDesign how big I want the file to be. So you can see it's not perfectly fitting to my page, but no matters, I'm gonna drag these images all the way out to the bleed mark. And then I'm gonna right click, fit, and fit frame proportional. Now I kinda want the title to be somewhere up here. So all we have to do is get this guy's head, um, basically in that rectangle that I just drew. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can double click into the frame once, uh, until you see this brown frame pop out. Now, if you hold Alt and Shift when you enlarge, it's going to not only enlarge the image proportionally, but it's also going to enlarge it from the middle of the image, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm just going to do this until I think I like the size of our subject here. And then I'm just gonna drag this image up until his head is in that part where we want the title to be. Actually, maybe this is covering a little bit too much. Just like that. We wanna leave a little bit room at the top where the text is, just so you can read what the text actually says. We wanna cover the whole thing. So to me, this looks pretty good. Press W to preview it. And then all we're going to do is actually just copy this exact frame. So I'm gonna use Alt and just drag this frame out to the side. So now we have two of these. And all we're going to do is find the picture where you had the transparent background. So for me, that was saved on my desktop. And again, all you have to do is drag it in to this new frame that we just duplicated. So you can see that the background for this one is completely removed. What I like to do is go into layers I know we're using layers, it's crazy. This is like the, the first or second time that we're actually doing this on my channel, but we're creating a new layer and I'm going to select this new frame that we just collected and actually move him to the top layer. Now, it's important that this new layer or this new uh, picture is on the top because we want it to go over this page on the bottom, okay? Now, I'm gonna move that frame all the way back to where the page is and just make sure that everything lines up. It's very important because we want to cover certain text. So I'm gonna switch that off and I'm actually gonna select my layer one. So in layer one, we're gonna make the title where we want the actual text to be. Now, once we have this in, we're going to create a text and I'm just gonna drag a text box from the left side edge to the right to where the margin is. And I'm gonna make sure that this is center aligned. Now, if this is a fashion magazine and maybe it's a little bit edgy, 
so fashion is spelled incorrectly. That's great. Um, we're gonna just play around with the characters until we see one that fits. Now, if we really want that fashion magazine look, um, you tend to notice that all of them have this serif font. So we're gonna use our high school teacher's favorite font, which, which is gonna be Times New Roman. And I'm gonna make this super big. So I'm just gonna move the title just where his head is kind of clipping it. So right where his head is clipping it. And this is the magical part. We're gonna switch on layer two and boom. And the text is actually behind the image so that it gives that effect of the text fading away into the back. Now, I kinda want this to clip out a little bit more. So I can just go ahead and do that. Now, you can play around with the colors and all that good stuff, but since I wanted to keep this a little bit of a shorter video, let me know if you guys want me to make a dedicated video on how I did the rest of this build out. But let me speed this up so we have a pretty cool layout for you. Okay, boys and girls, third page, it's probably gonna be the easiest one for us, which is gonna be great because this is the effect that we're going for. So we're gonna start off with a text. We're gonna start off with a rectangular frame tool that you guys are super familiar with, I'm sure. And I'm just gonna drag it so that maybe it's halfway across the page, uh, maybe a little bit more, but we can adjust this later, it's not a big deal. And I'm gonna drag in an anchor image. So for this one, I'm gonna use something like this. Right click, fitting, and I'm gonna fit the frame proportionally like that. Okay, once we have the Im image in, we're going to go ahead and put in a anchoring letter, if you will. So any letter will work. It's probably the first letter of your paragraph. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use a V just cause it looks so good aesthetically. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the type tool, which is shortcut key T. And I'm just gonna drag a text box anywhere on the page really. And I'm gonna use a capital V so I'm holding shift Y type V and all I'm going to do is go back to the selection tool or escape. And you can see that I have the text tool highlighted or the text box and I'm going up to type. I'm going down all the way to create outline. Now, if I zoom in, you can see that this V is now an object, a vector object that we can blow up. We can shrink it down. We can rotate it, whatever we want to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just enlarge it so that, you know, we want this to be big and I'm giving it an accent color. So I'm giving it the same red that we had in the previous layout. You can see that our is already looking pretty good. And all I'm going to do is drag out another text box. So type tool, and I'm just going to drag something out on the side. We're not going to take up the entire image and I'm just going to fill it with placeholder text. You obviously can put whatever text you need into this text box. Okay. I'm seeing that the image is not very big. So we're actually going to move everything down so that this hits the bottom margin and we're gonna drag the image all the way down here. Maybe we'll give it another fitting. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Now we want the text to wrap around the V. We don't want it to look something like this. That doesn't look very good. So what we're going to do is select the giant V that we created and then we're going into window and we're going to switch on text wrap. So it's gonna bring up this window over here and what we're going to do is just click this, which is wrap object around shape or wrap around object shape. So what that'll do is it'll create an outline around the, the path of this V. And then if we increase how much the offset is, you can see that the text is moving with what the offset actually is. Now, if we use this one, which is around a bounding box, it'll basically make it so that there is a rectilinear box around our object and it'll wrap around that which is not really what we want here. So we're gonna go back to the other one where it says wrap around object shape. And there we go. So we can move this around and the, our text will basically follow. We can also resize this, make it a little bit bigger. Maybe the tip goes off the page there. This is up to you guys to actually play around with. So if I like something like that, then that's perfectly fine to me. So there we go. That's a nice page with a anchoring element and an anchoring letter, if you will. And yeah, those are super simple, but super, super impactful techniques that you can use in your layouts. If you guys use any of these techniques, tag me on Instagram, but that's it. You have one, two, three that you guys learned today. Hopefully it was helpful. If you did, let me know down in the comments. Um, it really helps me out. Uh, I get a lot of amazing comments for you guys and I really appreciate it. And it honestly keeps me going. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And 
With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.